What's up guys, GT Gamer here and welcome back to Train Simulator 2017. And I'm going to get going and then I'm going to chat because usually I have a chat and everything gets going really slowly. So I'm just going to get straight on going. So we're going to set the train up here. I've already put the headlights on and the pantograms already up. So is there anything else we need to do? Open the doors, that might be a good idea. Uh, for some reason my controller is being a bit iffy. It won't change view properly. I don't know. Like the first time I loaded this game up, this is the second time. The first time, my controller just would not work. And I can't drive with a keyboard because I don't know any of the controls. So I had to relaunch the game, update a driver. That was the problem, I think. But now it's still being a little bit iffy. Like If I'm in outside view, it'll change view. But then it won't change view. Like I'm pressing the change view button and nothing's happening. So not quite sure what's going on with that. Right, we want to go forwards with a uh, reverser, brake off, and let's get going in one of the world's fastest trains. So let's give it 50% throttle. Our speed limit is 30 miles an hour, so we're going to try and stick to that. So we're going from New York's, uh, no, we're going from Philadelphia, 30th Street Station, and we're going to. Uh, this is 30th, yep, 30th Street Station. We're going to New York Penn, and we're going to go on a high-speed service, so there's only going to be one stop, and that will be at, at Newark Penn Station. So, this is quite a big station. We're going between a few very big stations. This is like the busiest route in America, the Northeast Corridor. And, of course, we're on the fastest train in America, the Acela Express. Acela, Excella. People say it differently. I call it the Acela, uh, Acela Express, or Acela, either one. I was going to record this video earlier, but then the dandest luck happened. Basically, on my computer, I don't have a monitor. I have a TV, and I used to have some crappy 20, I think it was 21 inch, quite an unusual uh, thing. It also had the weirdest aspect ratio, and Instead of being 720 or 1080 definition, for some unusual reason, it was 1226 by 900 and something, which was really odd. So, a few months ago, when I was unemployed, we had a 32-inch Technica TV in our living room. And Technica is like Tesco's own brand. It's cheap TV. And one day, it gave out in my living room. It, it went green and it started making a weird crackling sound. So my dad went out, brought a new one, and he said, oh, you can have this uh, old TV for your bedroom. It's a bit broke, but don't mind. So I put it in my room and sure enough, every now and again, and the screen would go green and it would just break. And I got pretty fed up with it. Until about three weeks after I put it in my bedroom. And then for whatever reason it just it automatically fixed itself so I was like oh yes I got an upgraded TV brilliant and then I had no problems with it until this morning when once again screen went green made a loud buzzing noise this was at six o'clock in the morning mind you so my stepmom wasn't happy that it woke her up and it turned itself off and it just would not turn itself back on which irritated me because I was halfway through making a brand new logo for my channel which are, well, if I make it, because I lost all my footage when it broke the TV, uh, it'll be out in a few weeks. But yeah, that happened. So at like seven o'clock this morning, I had, oops, speeding, I had to go out to town and look for a new TV. And I found a few nice ones. The problem was that their stand was like a corner stand, so like a leg in each corner to stand it up, which is all well and good, but I got a weird shaped desk so my TV just would not stand up on it. So it was either buy a new stand and get one of those nice tellies or just keep looking for one with like a stand in the middle. So, but eventually I found the one I got now which is a Panasonic, it's 43 inch so it's pretty big, it's a, definitely an upgrade from my old one, it's nearly a foot bigger. And it's got a centre stand, it's 1080 and surprisingly for a TV that big, you'd think, oh, it's got to have cost him four or five hundred pounds. Nope, I got it for £299. 
and it was 25% off so I'm pretty happy with it it's a very nice TV it's certainly better than the other two I had and of course because this one's not broken it should last a heck of a lot longer so I am really happy about that another thing that happened today and forget making my day this has made my entire year there was a boy at work I'm just gonna call him Dan and Dan was the world's biggest liar like I'm not even exaggerating something he told me before was that he had a girlfriend she found out she had cancer of course very tragic and that resulted in her jumping off the a bridge next day and killing herself which I believed him it was it's a sad story so I believed him I just left it at that didn't mention it again and then he told me about his second girlfriend and this is when things started getting fishy apparently she had an undisclosed medical problem which resulted in her having to go to the doctor but none of the hospitals in the UK which has some pretty damn good hospitals were good enough so he had to hire a private helicopter to fly across the Atlantic across the United States and then halfway across the Pacific to Hawaii to treat his ill girlfriend and when she got to the hospital of course the doctor immediately fell in love with her and he walked in on the doctor and his girlfriend having relations let's say and then he attacked the doctor and his girlfriend died yes yeah, something tells me that's not quite true but anyway where's this going well last week Dan came in and told us we were leaving look that speed limit's gone up to 110 now and look how fast it's accelerating but yeah Dan came in and he said oh sorry bro I've got to leave next week so he was like oh fair enough no one really liked him so he was like oh yeah you can go go have fun, have fun have fun in the world and out of interest someone goes um, so why are you leaving apparently he's got a new job in Newcastle which pays him £2,000 a week uh, working for his dad yeah right and when I was looking for my new TV today oh this is the best thing in the world I went into a charity shop to see if they had a TV stand because I couldn't find one anywhere and Dan was the sales assistant I was crying he's like yeah yeah I can get a two grand a week job he's a sales assistant in a charity shop nothing wrong with that by the way but oh, I was the best feeling in the world He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm better than you. No, you're not, mate. <laughs> oh, I was crying. Of course, I had to be the uh, annoying, awkward... Uh, the signal says... Oh, it's because we got a flashing green light. It said 90 on the track limit then, and it was like, no, you've got to go 60. I think it's because we got a flashing green light. I probably should warn you. I know absolutely nothing about the signaling system in America. And I know that different colours and different arrangements mean different things, but honestly, I have not got a clue. I, I no idea. Now it's gone back up to 90. That makes sense. God. And now it's going back down to 80. And then it's going back up to 110. God, I love those speed changes. But yeah, I know nothing about the signalling system. So you guys feel free to comment where I've gone wrong in the comments. I will read them. It's nice to learn. But just don't be an ass about it. Because... I tried reading up on it but it was just so much information to take in and I didn't have much time so I don't know everything I gotta be fair I know that different colours and different arrangements mean different things but I'm just gonna drive like I'm gonna use common sense like a green light a solid green light to me means go for it so I'm gonna go for it if I see a flash in yellow I'm gonna assume it means be cautious and if I see a red I'm gonna stop that's just how I roll I'm not going to go back, spend two hours reading through the manuals and all that. I honestly, I just haven't got time. I only have two, three days off to myself each week and I'm doing something tomorrow, so don't have time. But yeah, feel free on any of my videos, feel free in the comments to be like, oh, dude, you did this wrong. It, it is nice to learn, just don't be an ass about it. Right, 110 miles an hour, but to be fair, it's pointless accelerating past, say, 90, because we got to slow down in a mile. I can't wait for some of the faster sections, though. 150 miles per hour. I'm not sure if that's on this straight between New York and uh, Philadelphia, 
but in some stretches of the North East Corridor route, this train's allowed to go 150 miles per hour, which is faster than any train in Britain, definitely. It's not the fastest in the world, that would be the uh, Shinkansens and the TGVs and all that, but it's still pretty fast. I think I need to start slowing down a fair bit now. Why is the speed limit 45? It's got to be those signals. I'm glad I didn't do this on Korea Moto. Oh, it's frozen. Uh, okay. This is why I didn't ride this route before, because it freezes randomly. And I'm scared to do anything, because it'll cause a crash. Let's just give it a second. There you go. Yeah, this route's not exactly uh, stable. Let's just say that. Right, it's 45 miles an hour because we're crossing points, evidently. Right, we reduce the throttle, the brake now, bit of throttle. Speed limit's still not gone up to 50, even though it says it is, probably because we're changing at this point, I would imagine. Oh, no, coming straight here. Let's give it 16% throttle. This Amtrak, fair play, has a very nice interior in the cockpit. Oop, 50 again. Uh, that's the brake. Still getting used to these controls. Track speed 50. Signal speed blank. I was watching a video on Train Simulator before, and the guy pressed Alt D. But oh god, what did I do? I thought that did something, but obviously not. I just. Right. Okay, I don't know how to set the track speed up, unfortunately. But as I said, I'm just going to drive by intuition. we got a green light, that means go at the speed limit to me. Let's go outside view for a bit. Wow, that's quite a nice thumbnail there. That's very nice. This TV is so crisp. Oh, I love it. I've been meaning to get one for a while now, but it breaking this morning's just been... It's just made me want to get one even... Well, I kind of had to get one, so... I'm so glad, though. It's such a nice TV I got. I ho I'm pretty sure there's other trains on this route. I'm pretty sure of it, but I haven't seen any yet. I'm, I think there's the slower services, but there's no Asilas or anything like that. I'm not sure though, I haven't played this for a long time. I have done a time lapse video on this route, I think. Did I release that? I'm not sure. This route's very unstable and the tracks are very bumpy. I don't know why, but I remember making a video before, but I'm not sure if I ever completed it because there was one point where I got all the way through and because I didn't understand the signaling system, I blew through a signal I shouldn't have and uh, I slammed directly into an oncoming Amtrak train. Like, it was perfect. It was literally at the points. I think I still got that video. If I have, I'll link it in the... I'll put it at the end. I'll do, like, a little cutscene and have it. But it was literally perfect, because I didn't go through the signal, then hit him. I hit him directly on the point, so it was a side collision. And it was pretty cool, i got to be fair. Right, we got a yellow and flashing green. That means... That's the signal we had when we changed points. So I'm going to assume that's what it means now. And I'm going to slow down to 50 until the next signal. I'm pretty sure that's what the, the yellow with the flashing green means. It's annoying though because the speed limit's 100 and I really want to go 100 miles per hour. I love the speedometer in this cockpit. One thing I didn't show you because I didn't catch it. I wasn't expecting it. So it was before I started to record. But when you turn this train on, these two displays here, that one and that one, both of them say Amtrak, they have the Amtrak logo, then fade into the uh, dials which are on there. I thought that was really cool, I did. But it's at Amtrak there and there, like the proper Amtrak logo. After this next signal, depending on what it says, I'm going to have a look around the cockpit to see what other buttons we can press. But I don't want to be looking around faffing about just in case there's a red signal or something. Right, 33% for all. I'm going to stick to around 40 to 50 until we hit this next uh, signal. Can we see the next signal? I can see the signal, but I can't see what it says. 
you can see how bumpy this track is though like, look at the camera, whoa look at that and then it just <laughs> loads in the next part of the scenery I had to play around in some of my settings, I made it a little bit brighter, I was hoping that they would make it look a bit better and on my side it looks pretty good, I gotta be fair, right we got red and flashing green uh, I was right about the 45 limit, haha <laughs> We're changing points here. Yeah. One. How many tracks are we going to go across? All right, and the second one in. Oh, no, third. Right, can we go for it now? Maybe. Is the back of the train clear the points? Nearly. Still 45. I think it's after this next signal coming up. I think. I hope. It's a very nice model, this Asila Mind, isn't it? But whoever modelled it did quite well. Right, 45 still. That's a bit... Are we ever going to go above 45? Or is it when the back of the trip? Right, 100. You can hear the electric motor spooling up. Ooh, river. Sound like a child then. Right, let's have a look round the cab. So, that's the reverser, obviously forward neutral reverse dynamic brake that's like an engine brake it uses the engine's power to slow us down uh, we have power handle so the power lever train brake not sure what they stand for sup fs ho ho <laughs> em is emergency probably so let's not do that that is doesn't say Engine on or off? Ooh, I want to press that. Engine off. Oh, we can see the Amtrak thing. Oh, I didn't show it. It's a shame. Pantograph. Headlights. They're on. Ground light. Ooh, I wonder what a ground light does. Oh, that's those. There. Oh, that is so cool. They're flashing. I didn't know that I did that. Oh, that is cool. That is seriously cool. Does it do anything on the back? No. But either way, that is cool. Right, we're speeding. Neutralise it. Right, what else is there? I really like that ground light. Track speed 100. Wipers, meh. Cooler. Oh. Front hatch. Open, close. don't know what that did. What's the front hatch? Oh, I know what it is. Aha. Wahaha. So if I do that. No, it's not doing it. I thought it was the uh, this thing here where the coupling is. Hang on. Right, perhaps that's not animated then. Right, what was the other thing? Destination display. Can we change that? Where is it? Where's the destination display? Can you guys see the destination display? I can't. Um... Okay, I don't know where that is. Ground light, we've done that. We've done all those for there. That's the horn. Gotta slow down a bit. Can't concentrate on more than two things at once. That's the horn. Right, what's over here? Oh, ooh, I like this. Oh, that's cool. Like it or not, that's a seriously cool feature. Tilt. So you can turn the tilt on and off. Are we going to tilt now? I don't know if the tilt was on or off before. Let's go a bit faster. I want to see if we tilt at high speeds. Uh, reset. Emergency brake, let's not do that. Uh, alarms, no. Handbrake, let's not press that. Cruise control, 
Oh yeah, we're using that. We are using cruise control. Amount, sander, auto dynamic brake. Oh, there is so much more to this train than I realised. Right, hang on. Let me go up to 100. Come on. Go to 100. 99.678 there. Is it doing it? I think it's doing it. Oh, that is so cool. We have cruise control. No, we don't. Mother beep. How do I... Right, is it cruised in at 100? We're tilting. Oh. Dude, this is like the coolest thing in the world. So let's go cruise control there. Full throttle, no. I think that disengages it if you do that. So, right, our speed limit's going up to 110. So let's go full throttle. And 102, 103, 104. Five, come on. I really want to see this cruise control work. And then seven, hundred and eight. Right. There. Is it gonna do it? I think it is. Oh, this is amazing. I love this train now. The tilt is so cool. I want a corner to come up so bad now. Come on, we gotta go around the corner soon. Yep, there's one coming up. Oh, this is awesome. Outside view. I want to get a good thumbnail. With the tilt. I don't care if we go blasting through a red light or anything. Come on, where's this corner? That's the thing. As soon as I move the camera, that's when we'll hit the corner. Oh. Come on. I've got to lean more than that, surely. I reckon that for a thumbnail. Yeah, that's it. That is it. I'm disappointed with how much I leaned in that corner. Perhaps it wasn't sharp enough for a good lean or something. Right, we've got 110 mile an hour speed limit for a while. I am a bit concerned that the cruise control's not ha not holding it well enough. I'm also a bit con concerned that the speedometers are saying slightly different things. One says 109, one says 110. I've noticed that in other trains. I think it's the way it measures the speed. I'm not sure though. Like to the nearest mile an hour sort of thing. I could be wrong. I could be very wrong. But I think it's something to do with that. Where are we? I literally have no idea where we are. Oh, we've gone a fair way. But then we are going 100 miles an hour. And we got all this way to go. Wow. That is further than I thought. What's this place up here? I think that's, yeah, North Jersey Transit Yard or something like that. New Jersey, probably. It don't feel like we're going that fast, does it? Hmm, I don't think it does. We've got 66 miles to go. That's where we're going there. Pretty much a straight line, but I bet the track's not straight all the way there. 66 miles though, what's our ETA? We got over an hour ETA, so the speed must go down massively. Because like we'd have to, we'd only have to average 65 miles an hour to get there in an hour. So yeah, we must slow down or take a very long route or something. I'm a bit disappointed we haven't seen any other trains go by though. That's slightly disappointing. Very odd catenaries they have on this line. I don't know if it's all of America, but like with the two bars that go up really high and the bits that come off it, like the little kite shaped thing. I have no idea what that's about. Perhaps it's to do with lightning or something. I don't know. 
Um, oh, there's the destination board. I can't really read what it says, though. I think I need to turn my anti-aliasing up. I'm not quite sure how to do that, though. Ooh! That's cool, the pantograph sparks. I see it happening close up. There, eh, it's not the best spark, but that's still pretty cool. Got some nice shots of your cellar now. We're leaning a bit more on this one now. The lean looked a lot bigger on the first corner that it happened. I'm so glad we have cruise control mine because trying to maintain 110 miles an hour on this is just be fair, it's a few miles this section. That would have been a bit annoying. I'm very impressed that it has that implemented mind. What was the other things? A mount sando, don't need that, and auto dynamic brakes. Why not? Let's see if it breaks itself. I've got a sneaking suspicion it's not going to but it's definitely worth a shot is it gonna break itself we'll know at this 80 limit I doubt it I seriously doubt it hang on we got a flashing green light I think that just means that the speed limits going down to 80 oh the signal speeds working again I really want to see it auto break, but I know it's not going to. What if I turn cruise control off? Idle it. No, it's not going to. Let's see the dynamic brake in use anyway. So now it should slow us down. Uh, I'm not sure how to use it though, mind you. Yeah, I think it's slowing us down now. Yeah, that's slowing faster than if we was coasting down. So yeah, that works. Let's give it a little bit more to slow down. I have noticed that this train doesn't coast particularly well. Like, if you give it no power, it drops speed like a brick. Well, we've got a 30 limit coming up in a mile and 1.4 miles, so let's test it. It's on no throttle, in forward. And I bet it's not going to slow down. We've got a 60 speed limit coming up at this next signal. Uh, it's quite a way away, this next signal. Way away. <laughs> a way away station. But yeah, look how, slow, look how fast the speed is dropping just by coasting. We'll probably hit that 30 limit in time. I'm almost certain of it. It looks like we're about to stop, for God's sake. That car is floating. That car is literally fro floating. I think they may have made an error there. <laughs> oh! Oh, we have another train! Aha! Let's see if we can get a good thumbnail with it going past. Or at least a nice view. That's pretty decent. That is pretty decent. <laughs> We're 20 ma 28 minutes into recording and it's 12.28. That means I started at 12 o'clock exactly. That's weird. Yeah, we've hit the 30 limit and we're coasting. And we're still dropping speed. Genuinely, I'm pretty sure we'd stop Trenton. Nah, we're not stopping here. I'm going to actually stick to what I said this time. We're only stopping at Newark Penn and New York Penn. That's it. So, 30 limit. Let's give it, yeah, 33% throttle. That should bring us up enough. And then we got an 80 limit just after the end of this platform. But yeah, at least now we know there is AI traffic. So, that's a good thing, definitely. Because, I think it just seems boring when you're out here on your own it's just not very fun just sat there driving your train it's like there's no one around it it kind of takes you out of the experience 
Like, would anyone play Grand Theft Auto if there was no cars on the road, no cops to chase you, no people to kill? You just wouldn't, because there's something that makes it better by having AI. Just, I've no idea, it's like it takes away from your sense of loneliness, even though they're not real. You can still interact with them and do stuff with them, and this game just, it doesn't have that because there's not much AI traffic. Like right now, they should just be in a cellar whizzing past us, but there's just not because, well, I don't know why. I, it can't be that hard to implement it, but they just don't. And it is kind of sad. But then, there's not much we can do about it really, unless someone wants to redo every route and implement AI traffic, which would take a hell of a long time. And by the time they release all the routes, of course, we'd be on train sim world 2034 or something like that. All right, we're coming up on the speed limit. It's going up to 110 again. We are in Trenton. I can't even tell you what state that's in, if I'm honest. Uh, Trenton... I'm not sure. I've heard of it, I just can't remember where it is. Might be Philadelphia. I don't know though. Right. Uh, no, let's give it 66% throttle and hope we can hit the next speed limit before uh, we hit the 80 limit, which I don't think that's going to happen, so let's drop it down a bit. We're coming up on Hamilton Station. Again, I'm not going to stop. I'm determined to stick to what I said. I'm not going to be impulsive and go, ooh, that's a nice station, let's stop. I'm not doing that today. This is the grown up, better, more behaved me. I don't think that made sense, but let's go with it anyway. Oh, Natter and RD even noticed the speed limit went up. Oh my god. I am terrible. Our ETA is coming down, I think. I think it was on 32 before, so we should be there in less than an hour. We've gone 10 miles since we was last talking about it. I shouldn't have said that, it makes me sound repetitive. There's no cars on the road. The, the one game, this, the one thing this game absolutely sucks at is AI. There's no cars, there's very few people, there's very few trains. Like, even the people, I don't know if you've ever seen this, but the people's movements are crap. Like, whoever animated them didn't animate how fast they're meant to walk. So, some of them are doing, like, the moonwalk. Like, they're moving, they're physically moving really slowly, but their legs are, like, they're running, so it just looks so stupid. And I've seen them literally walk off the end of a platform. I've seen them walk straight through buildings, through the floor. It's the AI in this game is the one thing that absolutely sucks about it. I don't mean to be negative or anything. Okay, cruise control. Do we need power for the cruise control to work? No, evidently not. Some trains, particularly European trains, you have to put the power in a specific setting, then put the cruise control on, and then it tells the train, like, you're allowed to use this much power, maximum. So if you put it on, say, 50% throttle, then put cruise control on, it'll tell the train, keep this speed, but you're only allowed to use 50% throttle to do it. Which is a kind of cool system, I think. <sighs> Flat Coca-Cola, gotta love it. I just realised we forgot to play with these buttons up here. Don't work, doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work. That's that done, next thing. God, this is a straight piece of track. Very straight. Although saying that, there's a piece of track near my house. I've driven along it on one of my videos on the South Wales Coastal. And you turn a corner, like there's a very long straight coming towards Newport Station. I think it's like up to 20 miles long, like it is very, very long. Then there's like a slight right hand turn and then there's another two miles straight before you enter like an S-bend to come into the station. 
and the one straight which is like the landworn straight it is so straight that you can stand on a bridge and it's the bridge is near the end so if you look one way about half a mile away you can see the corner between the two straights but uh, if you look the other way you cannot see the end it's like that but more because this has to have a certain loading distance but you literally you cannot see the end you can see just a cut in through the trees for about five miles before it goes over the horizon it is ridiculously straight like train drivers must get bored going on there because it, what it is is a bit of forest a few fields there's nothing to look at for about got to be 10 to 20 miles long this straight as what's that i thought that was another train then that's just a platform we're at Princeton, which I think is in New Jersey. Princeton. I know, it's weird, I've, I've heard of all of these. Oh, there, try that again. I've heard of all of these, but I just can't quite place them. Like, I, I know them, I've, I've said them, I think. I know people have said them to me, I've heard them said, but I just can't place them. It's a weird feeling, that. What are these other dials, then? Card reader C slash O. Don't know what that means. Pantograph. Uh, I don't know if any of these bit gauges work. Yep, the brake. They actually work then. So, total train set. I assume that's the power. Uh, I don't know why it's repeated. unless it's one for each locomotive because this has a locomotive at each side I need to disengage cruise control I forgot which button it was to zoom out then right let's brake come on yeah there you go brakes off power and right zoom out Two, three, two, four, cruise control. That'll do. That'll do, pig. Right, as I was saying, I don't know why there's two of these. I'm assuming that because this is a double ended train set, as in there's a cab at each end with an engine at each, at each end, I assume one of each is for each end of the train, but again, I don't know. I've never driven in a cellar, I've never even been to America. That is my life goal though. I want to do a road trip across America, but weirdly, I don't want to do the whole Route 66 thing. Like, I don't know why, I just don't. I would rather go, I planned it out in my head. I want to go from Boston, Massachusetts, that's where we're going to start. And we're going to hire a car or an RV, something like that. And we're going to go uh, southwest down towards New York through New York have a stop there have a little bit of a look round then through New Jersey we're going to go across the northern states like Ohio to Chicago going to go to Chicago I want to stand in the Willis Tower it's one of the buildings in Chicago I think it's the Willis Tower has like a glass box that slides out the top and you can walk like 500 feet above the ground and scare the hell out yourself and your kids I want to go on that and have a look round maybe go to the seaside like the beach side I, I doubt there's a beach in Chicago but there'll be a docks definitely just have a walk along there maybe and then I want to go through Montana and all those across to Washington I want to go to Everett I want to go to Seattle and then I want to do a coastal trip down to California, San Francisco, uh, LA, San Diego. And then I want to go northeast up to Vegas. And I want to finish in the Grand Canyon and then go f and fly home from McCarran Airport. I think that would be an amazing journey. I'd That's my life goal. I am going to do that one day one day I'm definitely going to do it I'd love to also visit the states on a holiday maybe Florida but that's my life goal to do that road trip I know Florida might be quite nice 
It's the flattest state in America. Like, seriously. I think the highest point is only, like, less than 100 metres or feet or something above the sea level. That's, in, that's crazy, that is. I know that if the, all the ice melts, apparently it's going to uh, flood Florida completely. Like, there won't even be a bit of an island in the middle. It's just going to flood it. But that's amazingly flat. Although, to be fair, most of it is swamp anyway, like the Everglades. I found out before, do you know that the Everglades is not a swamp? It's a very, very slow-moving river full of crocodiles. Yeah, I didn't know that. It's only when I saw a documentary about a plane that crashed there, Value Jet 592, that I realised it was a river. Before that, I always thought it was a swamp, the Everglades swamp, but it's actually not. I would love to go to Florida though, see Miami. The thing with Miami is I'm not, I, I, it's hard to explain, I don't think it's crap, it, I don't even know how to explain it, just sat there hesitating. I, I don't think it's all this cracked up to be in the movies, I don't know why, I've just got this feeling that, like you know when you see something, it's like you should never meet your idol, I think it looks better in the movies than it would be in real life. I don't know why I think that, I just do. I know it's probably the same with every place you ever go to, but I don't know, I just, I wanna visit Miami, but I wouldn't pay to fly there and have a holiday. But if I saw like a cruise around the Caribbean that ends or, or starts there, I probably would go on it. But I don't know, I just wouldn't spend all that money to go on a holiday to Miami. And I can't tell you why. God, this is a very flat section right here, isn't it? I like those ground lights. I don't think I'm meant to have them on the entire journey, but either way. You can't really see it, but they're flashing sequentially. That's cool. I genuinely didn't know that was a feature in this train. That's cool. Right, where are we now? We've got to be halfway now. Five. We're probably more than halfway. Yeah, more than halfway now. I'm almost certain of it. Uh, there we are. Where are we? What's this here? Amtrak Adams. Is Adams the town, maybe? Don't know. God, this train's quiet. That's weird. Can you guys hear that? The audio changes when I move the camera. Can hear the track, can't hear the track. Can hear the track, can't hear the track. And the way this train's bouncing around, it looks like it's about to derail. I do you see the carriage clunk into the uh, engine then. That's weird though how the sound changes. That is odd. I've never experienced that before. Jersey Avenue we're coming up on, so we're probably in Jersey now. Sorry that I'm drinking so much, I've had a sore throat all week. You can probably hear my voice is a little bit rumbly today. I don't think rumbly is a word, but I don't know. If we say it's a word, it's a word. That's my rule. Seriously? This whole journey, we've seen one train on the busiest track in America. Really? That's stupid. Oh, is that another one? That looks like another one. That is another one. Wow, it's getting busy. Right, we've got to get a good thumbnail for this one. Why the heck is it going so slow? I really need to turn on my anti-alias in. I don't know if it's my anti-alias in or my graphics driver needs updating. If you don't know what alias is it, a, 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 if you don't know what aliasing is, basically, see this uh, grill here on the side of the train. It's got these lines going across it. The same with fences and basically narrow lines close together. If I move the camera, 
you can see they're changing because the game struggles to animate them and anti-aliasing basically it changes that so it doesn't look like that and I think the way it does it is something like it makes it less detailed further apart but it gives the effect of them being close together the lines but it, it just it looks weird if you if it doesn't have anti-aliasing it looks weird when you move the camera or when you go past fences and things like that even the uh, catenary overhead the wires are doing it like I don't know, when I was playing with the settings, I think I may have turned that off by accident. If not, then I need to update my graphics card driver. I'll have a look at that next time. I didn't realise, I didn't notice it before we started recording, that's why I didn't do anything about it. And I'm not going to exit my uh, recording just to change that. Right, back in the cab, make sure there's no track <laughs> speed limits. Yep, yeah, we've gone down to 100 without telling me cruise control is off and back on because I feel like being a lazy driver is it going to hold us? yep it's holding us I mean credit where credit's due that's quite a good uh, cruise control system it's not the best at holding us at a steady speed but it's certainly quite good right in preparation for the upcoming speed limit I'm going to drop the speed down to 90 and the reason I'm using cruise control so much is just so I can talk to you guys without having to worry about constantly speeding and fiddling with the controls and stuff like that. I am still driving the train a bit, but sorry, I got the hiccups. <laughs> so yeah, it's just easier. To talk to you guys if I don't have to concentrate on how speed every five minutes then I can actually look around and experience the views and stuff. Now, I imagine a real train driver uses the uh, cruise control so I'm not cheating. I bet all a seller express, I bet all drivers which have uh, cruise control use it unless there's like a built up area where there's lots of speed changes other than that I bet they do use it. Right, speed limit's going down, down to 80, then back up to 90. Speed limit's currently 100, going back down to... No, there's a lot of speed changes here. So, I'm going to pop the cruise control off. I can do that just by applying the brake. So, if you touch a control, it automatically disengages. That's cool. And I'm just going to... Oh, come on. Like that. We are leaning quite a bit now. I love that lean feature. That's cool. I genuinely didn't know I did that. I'm going to have to go on other trains and have a look if they lean as well. We're not speeding. Shut up. How can it tell me off for speeding when it's the one doing it? Because that makes sense. Ninety miles an hour coming up. And in another 2,500,000 minutes, we'll probably see another tr oncoming train we can take a nice picture with. Well, next to. 100% throttle, let's do this. Uh, power off. Come on. It should be a... Because it's only got one setting. It should be a button where you click it and it goes on. You click it, it goes off. You shouldn't have to drag it around. I know in the real train you would. But it's just fiddly dragging things around. Like, it's fair enough on the headlight switch, which has, like, five different settings. But, like, seriously, why can you just have it so you click? Because in real life, it's not that difficult. But in a video game with a mouse, it is quite difficult. I don't see why they couldn't just use it as a click feature. And I know you'll get the random person that goes, Ah, oh, that's not realistic. Yeah, well, get over it. This route so unstable. My frame rates have been like 80, 80, 20, 80, 50, 80, 20. So random. And of course we have massive bumps like that. I, I really don't know why this route is so unstable, why the track's so bumpy. I do love this model though on this train. There's actually three routes up in this part of America. There's the Northeast Coastal, uh, 
no is this northeast coastal or northeast mainline? One of them, I can't remember. No, this isn't the northeast mainline. Then there's the New York to New Haven and the New Jersey Bay Head, I think it's called. I, I haven't actually driven on that one. Like at all since I've had the game. But I don't know, that's definitely worth a look at some point. Three routes. I think all of them go to New York Penn and then they go their separate ways after that. I don't see why they couldn't just knit them all together into one tidy route. It can't be that difficult to import it into an editor and stitch them together or something. Cruise control's on, but our speed dropped down to like 85 then. We're 24, yeah, 24 miles away, not that far. I gotta be fair, this route's gone faster than I thought. Well, actually, no, it hasn't. The time has gone faster than I thought. We've been recording for 50 minutes. It genuinely doesn't feel like that long. I thought we was going to change track then. I was like, oh, God, we're going to derail. I bet we'll derail right at the end for, or something. That's just what life is like when you're me. You'll do something perfectly, perfectly. Damn you, you ruined it. It's like you bake a cake, comes out all nicely, and you cut it in a lovely slice and find out you left a spoon in the middle. That's exactly what would happen if I'm a baker, because I'm blooming useless. Everything I do looks great at first, then you find out how crap it really is. I'm like Thomas Midgley. <laughs> you, could, I don't know if any of you know who he is, but I was reading about him before, and when it comes to useless people, he was the worst. All of his inventions looked great when they first came out and then you realised they're very, very bad. And he's probably done more damage to the environment than, ev than anybody else. And I'll give you a brief overview of what happened. Basically, he was an inventor in the early 1900s, like so up to 1940 or 60, something like that. And his first major invention was a CFC, a chlorofluorocarbon. And at first it was like, wow, this new thing's amazing. Have you seen this new chemical technology? And it was in like hairsprays and deodorant and all stuff like that. And everyone was like, wow, this stuff's amazing. And then people realized how crap it was because it caused a humongous hole in our atmosphere. So that was a bit of a not so good thing. So then he invented something else, and the thing he invented was tetraethyl lead, which, if you never heard of that, that's the stuff you add to petrol, to leaded petrol, that's what makes it leaded. And because he joined owned the patent for with General Motors, they realised they could make a lot of money off this, so they basically sold it as the future, they promoted it as the future and millions were sold, leaded petrol was the standard everywhere in the world and then they realised that it was killing people and causing mass brain problems leading to stupid babies essentially with brain deformities and stuff like that and then he contracted, I think it was polio, a very bad disease, whatever it was and once again he decided to invent something so his family would care for him. And what he invented was a system of pulleys and rigs to help get him out of bed to make it easier on his family. And once again, this thing seemed great at first, helping him all the time. And then guess what? He was killed by his own invention. <laughs> that guy was bleeding useless, fair play. Like, he had three inventions in his life and every single one of them was massively bad. <laughs> like, imagine, imagine being that guy. He probably made a lot of money to be fair. But then he's probably killed hundreds of thousands of people. So yeah, don't be him. Don't be an inventor that bad. He was held as a massive success in his time though. But I, I thought I'd share that with you because I found it really funny. Another thing I find really funny, I include this in one of my old fact videos on my other channel. I bet you can't guess what the fear of long words is called. Nope. Any takers? The 
fear of long words is called hippopotamonstrous esquipedeliophobia. Yep. The fear of a long word is a long word. Whoever named that is like next level stupid. There's just a few things I find funny. I probably, some of you are probably sat there like, what the hell is this dude talking about? This isn't the usual GT gamer we know. Where's the stupidity and the nonsense? I'm still here, trust me. Watch me blow through a red light now and kill everyone. Because that's something GT Gamer does. Linden. Linden's a big city, if I remember right. Well, it certainly looks big. That building alone's pretty damn big. I wouldn't quite want to live there, right next to the e the northeastern corridor. That's what this route's called. Northeastern corridor. Couldn't remember. That's the one. Yeah, I'm not sure I'd want to live right next to a track this big. Like, I get fed up living next to the South Wales Mainline. And that has, I think, two trains every 15 minutes. I'd imagine this has a lot more frequency. Why are every single signal flashing then? That's weird. 55 limit coming up. We're getting close now. Got to go over there. If I remember right, this goes like... It kind of wraps round into the station. Let me just check the map. Uh, show task. So yeah, we go past it and then it loops round into it. When we get to... What did I say this was? New Jersey Transit. That doesn't really help. Is this New Jersey Penn then? Uh, New Newark Penn, yep. How far away are we? Not far, not far at all. What's this next station we're coming up on? Newark Liberty Airport, that's the international airport for Newark. That's Newark Penn. Are there any others after that? Yep, we got Syracuse. Syracuse is a big place, like a big station. And then we got New York Penn. And look how big this station is. It's got 21 platforms. Is it New York Penn or. What's the other one in New York called? Central Station. This Central Station has 67 platforms on two stories. Like, that is a new level of massive. 67 platforms. The biggest train station I've ever been to had eight. So, no, it had 13, I think. It was Liverpool Lime Street. I think it has 13, so either way, it's huge, and we need to start braking a lot. Uh, changing track. Uh, going too fast. Uh, making funny noises. But yeah, just 67 platforms. Is there any need for that? And also, oh, I was wrong. You can click that to turn it on. I didn't know. We're a bit slow, but honestly, I'll just wait until the next speed limit which is 90 coming up so yeah only a little bit below the limit five miles an hour not that much difference we are going to come across another train soon i believe where was it i saw another one. Oh, elizabeth i didn't see that station there is a train there it'll probably it's probably uh, set to pull out the platform as soon as we pull in or something like that which is a cool detail because that does happen quite a lot in real life so I think that's definitely a cool feature right the speed limit's gone up to 55 so I'm going to put it on 33% throttle just so it picks up to 55 and then we can go full throttle after the 90 limit I think that's quite a good idea now Elizabeth this is a big place as I said, I know where all these places are. Like, on a map, I can place them. I'm just not very good with states. But I roughly tell you where states are, but not really in depth. It's like most people in Europe can't uh, name the states, like, put them on a map. In the same way that I think a lot of Americans can't label a lot of European countries. But I'd imagine most Americans know the big ones, Spain, France, the UK... 
But how many people can tell me where Estonia is in America? Like how many Americans can tell me that? I think it's just one of those things. You know more about your local area than you do about anywhere else. Because there's only so much stuff your brain can hold. Shame, really. It'd be amazing if everyone had an eidetic memory and could remember everything. Imagine that, though. Imagine, just imagine if you had an eidetic memory. And, like, obviously you'd be pretty damn smart if you had that. Like, just imagine knowing every single word anyone's ever said to you, never forgetting somebody's name. Being able to tell a lie in the blink of an eye because they just, they said to me, it's like, actually, that contradicts what you said in June. It's like, dude, seriously, that was three years ago. I know, but I never forget. Imagine how awesome it would be having an eidetic memory with speeding. I saw that just before we hit the speed limit, but I was scratching my back so I couldn't do much about it. But yeah, honestly, I'd love to have an eidetic memory. Just being able to remember everyone you've ever met. Of course, it has some downsides. You'd never forget that mean thing the bully said to you in school. And if your great aunt died, you'd never be able to forget their face and how nice they were to you, which would make it a bit harder. There's another seller. So there are AI sellers on this route, we have established that. So yeah, I'd love to have an eidetic memory. Just remember every single thing everything's ever said to you, everything you've ever seen written down. Remember every single word you ever saw in a book. Remember the story of every book, obviously. You'd only have to watch a film once to remember everything that happened in it. That'd be so amazing. So this is Newark Liberty Airport, quite cool. But I like the way it says Newark Liberty Airport on the top. That's a pretty awesome detail. So the next stop is New uh, Newark Penn. What does Penn stand for? Penn, I think, I think I remember this because someone mentioned it to me before. I think that this used to be part of the Pennsylvania and something ra railroad which back when all the railroads were uh, company owned they would name a lot of the stations that, why have we got a 10 mile an hour speed limit but yeah I think now it's back up to Sandy that makes sense thanks game but yeah I think that this used to be owned by the Pennsylvania and something I think it was Long Island or something like that it was owned by some railroad with Pennsylvania in their name. So they used to name the stations by whichever company owned them and ran them. So people would know which track they're getting on, which company's train they're using and stuff like that. So like Pen the Pennsylvania Railroad would do trains to Pennsylvania and Virginia. And uh, New York Central would have trains to Long Island and Maine and stuff like that. I think that's how it worked. I'm not sure. If you know, let me know, by all means. I do love reading your, your guys' comments. You just don't leave that many. <laughs> Bit sad, really, but... I do love reading through, even if it's just like... Oh, by the way, you pronounced this wrong. It's like, ah, oh, thanks for letting me know. It, the comments can get annoying. Like, I get the same few people now and again pop up like, oh, great video, add me on Snapchat. It's like, I don't have Snapchat. Or another one is, uh, great video, do you need some music? I, I can do you some free music. It's like, no, I've, I've got music. <laughs> just, I like your support and all, but just please don't spam. It gets annoying pretty quick. Like, since, you know, since we're going 35 for a while. Actually, no, we're stopping here, aren't we? Duh. Just apply a bit of brake, then the cruise control goes off. I'm going to coast into the platform, I think. Why are we picking up speed? Are we going downhill? Yeah, we're going downhill pretty steep. We wasn't braking then, that was weird. I don't know why the first 20 is illuminated on the speedboard in white and then the rest is red. No idea why that is. Picking up speed again. Pretty fast it picks up speed, this train, fair play. 
just want to gently roll to a stop in the right place. So I'm going to lay the brakes off here. Actually, no, I'm not considering how much speed we're picking up. Seriously, this this much brake was not enough to stop us then. Wow. Come on, slow down. Okay, 20% brake does nothing. Confirmed. Like, myth confirmed, it does nothing. And T to open our doors. Here come all the uh, lovely passengers off our beautiful Acela Express. Acela, Acela, whatever it is. <laughs> no wall, wall. No wall, wall. I get amused so easily. Come on, doors. Shut up. Shut the doors. There you go. Break off. We'll probably start rolling. Are we going to roll? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> No throttle needed. Dot com. Right, let's go for it. Thirty-five. I'm just going to give it sixteen percent throttle to get us going. Which, once again, appears like it's doing absolutely nothing. That's useful. That's a very unique bridge there. I think that's when the bridges with the centre part lifts up for the boats. But that's not the unique thing about it. The unique thing is the tracks there that go through the middle and go up and over. That must have taken a lot of engineering to build like that. It's basically a flying junction inside a bridge. So it must, a lot of engineering work must have gone into that. Where do those tracks go? Uh, one goes over us, one goes over those three, and they turn into the outside tracks. Huh. Okay. Right, we're coming up to that big yard in a moment. Right, let's floor it. 100% throttle to get all the way up to a whopping 60 miles per hour. Yeah, I said it's like a flying junction. It essentially is. Well, it is. That one is especially. Well, this one goes. Yeah, they're both flying junctions. It's just odd how the bridge has different levels of track inside it. I've never seen that before. Speed. Caught that one in time. Uh, I'm going to give it 30% throttle until we hit this 90 speed limit coming up. Less than 10 miles away now. I think it's this station, it might be central, actually I think it's both, which goes into a tunnel before we get into the station, I'm pretty sure it's this one, I, feel, I, I think it's both of them actually, both of them are underground stations, so we're going to dip down into a tunnel, quite a long tunnel, and then we're going to come out in the station with a very low speed limit, I think it's 15 miles an hour in the station, which I suppose is fair enough. 50% uh, throttle for this part. So this is that yard. Pretty big, not huge, but pretty big. Doesn't seem like it's used very often considering there's grass growing through all the tracks. Those tracks look like they're used a fair bit. That middle one there doesn't though. The one with no catenary. Is that the Hudson? No. Uh, which side new? Yeah, I think that's the Hudson. Let me know, guys, if that's the Hudson by there. I think it is. Or is that the Hudson ahead? Or are they the same? No. I think that's a lake. I'm going to start coasting because the speed limit's 60 in a moment. Yeah, it's a lake. But was that... A Pretty sure that's the River Hudson below. Or was it? I don't know. I know we go under the Hudson or over it or something. I'm pretty sure the tunnel just for the station goes under the Hudson. Or goes under a river at least. Ah, uh, I remember this bit now. 
because I thought this was a bit silly the first time I drove this route. This 60 mile an hour speed limit with a 75 straight after is for a bridge and I remember thinking why the heck does the speed limit go down for a bridge when the track's straight? It is a bit silly but then it dawned on me that it's probably that the bridge is really old so it can't take too much stress or something. But yeah, the first time I rode this, I was like, what the hell? Why has the bridge got a different speed limit? But it does make sense, I suppose. Coming up to Syracuse now. I'm not going to stop. Hang on, that's not Syracuse. Syracuse is a different track. Secaucus. Is that how you say that? Secaucus? Secaucus? Well, C-A-U is co, like it's in Caucasian, so it's got to be Secaucus. I've never heard of that, Secaucus. Sounds like a euphemism. Hey babe, want to come back to mine and Secaucus? <laughs> That's so crap. <laughs> I'd love to say that to someone just to get a slap. It'd be worth it. Secaucus. No, that doesn't ring a bell. It's certainly an odd name. It's got a cool plat. It got like a cool station building though. Oh, that's pretty cool. They found the alias in is starting to annoy me now. <laughs> the way roads and stuff bla uh, flash in the distance. It's actually a pretty cool building, to be fair. We're speeding, but I just don't care. I should do a little bit. That was a cool building. And then the track separating the three for no obvious reason. Ooh, big yard over there. That's probably the freight for New York or something. Or New Jersey. I'm pretty sure we're near New Jersey now. New yeah, well Newark, New Jersey, innit? And zoom back in. Da -da -da -da. And throttle. So the fastest speed we got up to was 110. I could have sworn there was a 120 section on this route. I know there's a 150 section on the other bits. I think that's between New York and Boston, maybe. Probably Boston. There are a few stops in the middle of Boston and New York, though I just can't think what they are. I think Bridgewater. Oh, and back on this corner. Do you know what? I got a distinct, distinct feeling I've already done this route in a video. I just can't remember if I have. You either got two routes or... Did I? I can swear I got a thumbnail here. Either way, it's funny if I didn't. Oh, well, we've got to slow down. Yeah, I swear I got a thumbnail by year before. I'm almost certain of it. <laughs> I think I've done two routes on the same section. Oh, wow. And then here's the tunnel. Is this the tunnel into the station? I'm pretty sure it is. Or is this just an an another random tunnel? Got to keep an eye on the signal speed by there, because if this is the tunnel I'm thinking of, we've got a 15 mile an hour limit at the end, so I do have to keep an eye on that. It's unusual though that we're losing speed whilst rolling downhill. That's not something I've seen before. It's quite a steep downhill gradient as well, so perhaps I have to give it some throttle to tell it to hurry up. not really much to look at in a tunnel is there and I don't want to start talking about some obscure topic because we'll be at the station before yeah this is the tunnel I was on about we'll be at the station before I can finish what I'm saying so I'm not going to chat about something I saw or blah 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 but yeah we're coming up to the end now two miles out 15 mile an hour limit at the end so I'm just going to let it coast the rest of the way Unless we need to apply some throttle. 
But yeah, so th this definitely been good. I'm glad I got to do this because I've managed to test out my new telly. God, I love this telly. So slim and slender. That's a mouthful. But yeah, this new telly is absolutely awesome. 43 inch. I've never had a telly so big before. I was going to get a 55 inch one, but the legs, the way the legs are on my computer desk, it wouldn't have fitted. Like the legs would have been overhanging and it would have fell over. Probably not a good idea. 36, I think, yeah, we're going to have to apply some throttle. Thing is, I don't want to go right the way back up to 60 because I'll never slow down in time for the 15. I'm just not that good a train driver. That anti-aliasing is very, very annoying though. Like I can see it on this speed display there. It's driving me mad. I'm going to have to go and play around with that or something. Unless it's some a feature of the new TV maybe. Perhaps it's just more clear because the pitch is clearer. I don't know, could be, could well be. Right, now I'm going to coast. And because we're going uphill quite steeply, it should slow down at least close to the 15 mile an hour speed limit in time. You can see the end of the tunnel now. Don't know what that line across the top is. I think that's meant to be the wire for the catenary. But I'm not exactly sure why it's glowing. We're actually slowing down too early. That's amazing. It's a very big station, New York Penn. Not as big as Central with its 67 platforms, but still pretty big. Especially when you consider there's only two tracks entering it from this side. Right, and coast. Probably going to have to break. I'm going to get my cruise control button ready. I can't be bothered to hold it at 15 because it's just too slow. I'll constantly be speeding. 15, I'm going to put it on at 14 I think. There, that'll do. So I need to go into the last little bit in the station, isn't it? But yeah, two tracks opens up into all of this. That's pretty insane. Probably going to cross these points here on the left because we're going into platform 11. Yep. Can we go outside view? Is that the Empire State Building I can see the top of by there? Yep. That is the Empire State Building up there. I can't move the camera down any further. There you go. There's the Empire State Building. Not sure what that building there is. Looks important though. Can I see? I was about to say the Twin Towers then. That's probably not going to be there. Uh, what's the what's the new one called? The World... Yeah, it's just One World Trade Center, I think. NYC Train Q Point. That sounds fun. Going to the end of our journey now. These platforms aren't very big, are they? And most of the space is taken up by concrete pillars. Or iron pillars, whatever they're made of. Mm. Not the most scenic platform in the world, but I suppose it's functional fit a lot of trains in. And the back is just coming onto the platform now. So I'm going to take it off cruise control and let it coast down to a stop. Stop next to this lift or whatever elevator. We're in America. Gotta call it elevator. And break. Anyway, guys, thank you ever so much for watching. This has been a great journey. I can't change camera. But thank you so much for watching. This has been enjoyable. I've managed to test out my new TV. Now I've got to go record some transport fever. So I will see you next time. Peace out, guys. Thank you.